Hi, I'm Aaron, and in this episode of Short Lessons, you are going to learn about the origin, style, notable works, and evolution of Spider-Woman Theatre. This theatre company has set an example for great indigenous theatre over the past 40 plus years, having incredible shows made up entirely of indigenous women, writers, actors, and directors included. Spider-Woman Theatre works as both a representative and a series of lessons for native and non-native communities to learn and grow from. In 1976, Muriel Miguel founded the Spider-Woman Theatre Performance Group with Lois Weaver, Pam Verge, and her two sisters Gloria Miguel and Lisa Mayo, who was born Elizabeth Miguel. The core group consisted of the three Miguel sisters who grew up in Red Hook, which Gloria Miguel recalls as an uncomfortable Italian neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. She remembers how she and her sisters were often made fun of and targeted with racist comments due to their indigenous backgrounds, which are Kuna origins on their father's side and Rappahannock origins on their mother's side. Gloria recounts how the whole family had trouble growing up, and the only thing that saved them during that time in the 30s were the Wild West shows and the native song, dance, and people they always had in their backyard. On top of social hardships, their family participated in sideshows at amusement parks where people would come to look at the Indians. These racist sideshows hit a breaking point for Gloria and Elizabeth, who eventually quit and stopped going with their mother and father to the shows. The sisters drew on experiences like these in their plays, but prior to the formation of the performance group, each sister studied and experienced different sectors of theater and performance and brought their own background and experience to the group. Muriel Miguel, a choreographer, director, and actor, had a background in dance and choreography prior to Spider-Woman Theatre. Growing up, she was the co-founder of a performance group called the Little Eagles and studied modern dance with famous choreographers, including Alwyn Nikolai, Eric Hawkins, and Jean Erdman. She was also one of the original members and performers in Joseph Chaikin's experimental theatre group called The Open Theatre. Gloria Miguel, an actor, playwright, and educator, had more of a generic theater background studying drama at Oberlin College with Herbert Blau prior to Spider-Woman Theater. However, she also sang in her youth, singing theological music at Warren Street Methodist Episcopal Church and attended singing lessons. She recounts her influence on her younger sister Muriel and how she took her to dance and piano lessons, which led to Muriel's eventual career in theater. Lisa Mayo, born as Elizabeth Miguel, was an actor, playwright, and activist, and also had a background in singing. As a child, she sang in the Methodist Church in addition to participating in folk dancing with her sister, Gloria, and went on to study singing at the New York School of Music to be classically trained as a mezzo-soprano. Spider-Woman Theater is pretty ambitious in how they structure their work. The performances always revolve around the identity of Native women, with their content constantly pulling from geography, cultural practices, and other concepts which tie into their culture. You may be thinking about another troupe that uses similar techniques, El Teatro Campesino. This Chicano theater company also bases their stories on first-hand knowledge or experiences, which makes sense since their goal is to present a just and accurate account of human history while encouraging future generations to take control of their own destiny through this type of work. In fact, they inspired and collaborated with Spider-Woman Theater. Muriel Miguel states why this type of content is important. It's us. It's not neat. It's like our lives. It's real, it's important, and it's happening now. So what exactly sets this troupe style apart from others? Well, essentially, it's how accessible their content is. Linda Tuiwai Smith actually describes this concept of accessibility in her work, Decolonizing Methodologies. See, when it comes to sharing knowledge, the challenge for native storytellers or researchers is always to demystify, to decolonize. Spider-Woman Theater's approach to this is through using popular traits in native storytelling. You got your trickster figures, your personal anecdotes, and you also use culturally specific music, arts, and dances, and then some. Plus, the actual content in each show comes from these women's personal lives, or even just things going on in their communities. This isn't really a new practice for them either. It goes way back to their start in the 1970s. Muriel Miguel originally wanted to work with women at that time to recognize violence in women's lives. All kinds of violence, as she noted. This makes a lot of sense purely by seeing what was going on at that time. The feminist movement was at a major peak for one. In this way, the collaborative construction of their work mirrors the concept of Egara Dogid.
It essentially refers to a place where people come together to listen to life lessons, perceive paths to understanding, and discuss ways to heal. As Miguel states, it is necessary to talk about all the things we don't talk about, and the mission and stories constructed in her troupe clearly present that. And of course, we can't forget the amazing design and tech used in their shows. You have blendings of fantasy and reality in a show similar to traditional native story setups. The music, singing, and dances are also specific to the native communities which they represent. There's also abstract lighting and sound, oftentimes to accentuate certain parts or themes of the work. And the costumes! You can't forget how wild and dramatic they can be. But maybe it's easier if I just show you what I'm talking about. Spider Woman Theater rose to stardom after the premiere of Woman in Violence that achieved worldly recognition and led to over 70 performances within the year throughout the U.S. and Europe. The performance tackled issues on sexism, racism, classism, and violence towards women. In 1976, their first performance, intended to show feelings of Indian situation, the Indian movement today, and violence as both woman and Indian, Spider-Woman Theater gained popularity, addressing violence, stereotypes, and marginalization that disproportionately affected indigenous people. Spider-Woman continued to tour across the country with new performances. In 1978, Trilogy Friday Night... Jealousy and My Sister Ate Dirt premiered. In the following years, they released Premiere of Cabaret, An Evening of Disgusting Songs and Pukey Images, Oh, What a Life, The Fit in Room, and Sun, Moon, and Feathers, and Split Britches. The production Sun, Moon, and Feather depicts three stories of an immigrant family adjusting to relocation. The production incorporates the stereotype of the drunken father and the difficulty of adapting to American life. The production is important as it highlights the stereotyping and marginalization that Indian people have had to face. In the late 20th century, Spider-Woman Theater was performing shows in New York City, Power Pipes in Chicago, and receiving an honorary doctorate of fine arts in Miami. The premiere of 1996 Trail of the Otter gives the audience the otter's journey through the continent as they face AIDS, oil spills, greed, and battered women. The otter is significant because it serves as a trickster in Native American culture that can help teach the realities of the cruel and funny world. The production importantly showcases the life of indigenous people, their struggles and addictions, and what it truly means to be an indigenous person in today's world. A Spider-Woman exhibition was showcased at the National Museum of the American Indian Smithsonian to honor them for 20 years of pioneering in theater. A short five years later, they were also recipients of Lifetime Achievement Award from Women's Caucus for Art and in 2013, recipients of the Otto Rene Award for Political Theater. 2010 saw the premiere of Red Mother performed and written only by Muriel Miguel, one of the three founders of Spider-Woman. The story revolves around Belle, a character who travels previous indigenous soil with her horse, Blue Fred. The story is meant to dismantle the stereotype perception of indigenous women being virtuous, noble earth mothers. Their latest project was released in 2016, Material Witness. Founded in 1976, Spider-Woman Theater is regarded as the longest-running native theater company in North America and the longest-running feminist collective in the world. In 1976, this newborn troupe published their first production, Woman in Violence. It achieved Muriel's goals to work with anger, with feelings about being boxed in, feelings about the Indian situation, the Indian movement today, my own violence as a woman and as an Indian. It was also the show that confirmed Spider-Woman Theater's existence with some 70 performances in New York and Boston within a year of its debut. It represented the beginning of this revolutionary theater, but also laid the foundation for the future performances of this troupe. Spider-Woman Theater itself has undergone many changes in membership, in creative process, and in the content of their work. In the 1980s, the six troupe members split into two groups. Group members Lois Weaver, Peggy Shaw, and Pamela Verge began to develop their own piece entitled Split Birches, and the three Miguel sisters developed Sun, Moon, and Feather about sibling rivalry and racism while growing up in Brooklyn. Since then, although the core of Spider-Woman Theater remains the three Miguel sisters, there are many designers, technicians, and other actors cooperating with this influential native theater troupe. 
The theater started to become a training ground for the native actresses, notably Muriel Borst and the Colorado Sisters. It provides opportunities for them to develop their own careers. Spider-Woman Theater remains active even now. As one of the most representative native theaters of the 20th century, director Muriel Miguel has said that the company operates on a hundred year plan, because I really think of it as a legacy. Spider-Woman Theater has accomplished many achievements, such as a famous reputation and federal status, but most important, it attracts other women to native theater work. The core members of Spider-Woman Theater admitted that they want their descendants to continue their legendary native theater company in attempt to solve the themes and the techniques themselves before eventually doing the same with their own descendants, who will also pass it on to their own descendants. You understand. This is in hopes of encouraging every incoming generation to enter the theater field and help the theater's message and cultural relevance survive. After all, the members may change, but the appreciation and representation of these cultures must live on. And there you have it, folks, a short lesson on Spider-Woman Theater. Be sure to check out our other videos on this channel, and feel free to share this video or our channel with others who may be interested. All of our sources are listed in the bio, and make sure to check out Spider-Woman Theater's own website if you want to learn more about them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our future videos.